Hello guys, Ryan here from the London Craftsman. Thanks for coming back and watching. Today's video is about my dog holes. As you can see, I've made a start on the holes on the top. Um, I'm gonna be showing you what I've learned about this template. Um, this template is from CNC Design. Um, I'm gonna be using it just to do one line, just to show you and give you a few tips of what I've learned along the way. I've never used one of these templates before. Um, so it's been a learning curve of where to start a template how to flip it around, how to line up the holes to carry on the next one, etc., etc. So stay tuned, watch to the end, and I hope you enjoy. So usually, as far as I've read up, A is your first cut. So you line A, you see A there, which is this side, you usually line that up with your first edge or your edge of your um, top. Well, it says in there, I leave at least 12 mil for trimming. But if you've got a nice square board, for example, a nice eight by four sheet or a four by four sheet, whatever size you're doing, do you really need to trim around? It's got nice round corners, so fair enough, you can just use a flush cutter and just, or your bush and just go round to trim up and give yourself a nice round, but if you're not interested in that, I think you can just line it up to the edge of your top completely, flush and flush. And then obviously you can just start routing away. But I've done mine a little bit differently. I've had to make sure that all my holes were centre around my hatch. I don't want to put holes in this hatch. I'm going all the way around, and as you can see, can you see one, two, three holes? They're perfectly centre. So I had to work out my start stop position, which is basically from this point. It was 187 mil away from this joint to give me my first set of holes. So I came in 187. And then because I was starting on A, I had to start center because all my holes have to be equal this way and that way. So I'm basically starting my set holes center of the bench. I had to come in Find my center line of A, holes. Can you see I've got a center line, which is the center of this set of holes. And line that up with a pencil line I drew, which is basically the center of the top. And then I just basically line that up with my line. Missed out the first set, and then I went straight on to the second set because I'm skipping every set of holes, every second set, as you can see. I'm not doing one, two, three, four. I'm doing one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the way I set mine out. And then I just work forward this way and then I'll work back. But I'm gonna show you once you've got started. So for example, now going back to the basics, if you have just done your first set of holes, A on your edge, the next thing you need to do is get your little dowly pin things, which go in these top corners. Remember not these ones the ones that are splayed out, but these ones, and near the handles. You then, imagine I just routed these set of holes out, okay? One, two, three, four, five, whatever. I then need to turn my template around and put those pins in that set of holes. And they will line up perfectly with the set of holes that you've just routed out, okay? And then you just start routing out all of those, and then you do the same, move it up, put those into the hole holes you just routed and carry on until you've done the whole work lot. But remember to set your bench out. If you've got a bespoke size, like I've got 1.6, like I said, I found the center line of this set and I lined it up with the center line on my bench and then I just missed that set of holes and just came across to here, flipped my template around, came across to here. So this pencil line that you can see is my center line and as you can see, I've got perfectly 119 mil border there, and we've got exactly the same 119 mil border there. Also worked out, so we've got decent distance here from the table saw. And by the time I finished here, I'll have exactly the same gap here and here, either side of my hatch. So it's a bit of planning. It took me about an hour, an hour and a half to work out um, where everything's going to be able to centralize. Also, same gap there, okay? Or at least a decent gap um, to match. Because remember, I was revolving around this hatch. I had to make it central, so this cap is slightly bigger than that gap, but I'm happy with that. 
But all right, so now I've got my set of holes over there started. I'm just gonna show you. Remember you start using B now, your B face, because it's got these bush, these little pins, okay, that line up. So you can see here, I've got this set of holes left to do. Okay, so well the next one is probably gonna be about there, then there, then there, then there. This template's not long enough to do all seven holes that are remaining, but I'll be able to just move that over after. So what I'm simply doing is getting my little pin, putting it in this one, can you see? You see the hole? Finger it a little bit, can you see that hole? Um, going into that one, <laughs> and then into this one, and it should be nice and tight. There shouldn't be any play. Well, there is very, very fractional play. Remember, that is all down to, I'm, I'm, when I've been using this template, there's very, very, very small tolerance, um, or gap, shall I say, within the pin and the top itself. Very, very fractional. All these holes that I'm getting at the moment, I'm getting nice tight fittings. You know, nice resistance. Remember, I'm lacquering these tops and probably lacquer is gonna go in the side of the hole. I want it to be ever so slightly um, loose. Not tight where I'm pushing it in, I can't get it out. Um, so, talking about that, let's jump onto the router so I can tell you about the bush before we start. So what we have is, I've got just an old Ryobi. I've got a few different routers. This is absolutely fine, it's nice and powerful. But what I want to talk about is the bush itself. This bush that it comes with is a 30 mil bush, um, or a bush guide, shall I say, guide bush. Um, and they may ver vary very slightly between routers. So I can't say with yours how many, you know, if you're gonna to have to shim this out a little bit with some tape. They do supply you with aluminium sticky tape. Can you see around here? I've applied a few layers. Um, and that's to come probably part five of my ultimate workbench build or something like that. I have done, got some footage. But I did some testers of this um, with an aluminium dog hole that I bought from the same company, CNC Design. These ones that are meant to fit these holes spot on. Look how nice resistance that is. I worked out that I need four layers of aluminium tape that they supply you with. So basically wrap it around nice and tight, stick it on, another layer, another layer, another layer, until you've got four layers. And then I found that gives you exactly the right hole. Without that, there was just too much slop. There was probably about three quarters of a mil, a mil slop. So before you start, do a test run, work out, do one layer, then two, then three, then four, and work out what works for you. But remember, once you've used it once or twice, it might get squashed down a bit. So try it over and over and over again, maybe five times once you think you found your setting, and then test it again. Make sure it hasn't shrunk or got smaller and you need another layer. So I've gone for four, and that is what I've been doing up until now. Um, so now I've got my template set up in the right place. I mean, for your comfort, you can always just tick, you know, I can just go, right, X, 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 rub out all my other X's that I had before, or just scribble them out. And this way, even though you're gonna start and stop and check your work before you start, um, you can't really go wrong, okay? So I know that I'm doing that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Yep, they all line up that way. Yep, they all line that way. You just got to double check because yesterday I made a little boo-boo and that wasn't even down to me being strict. That was me just routering one out. I moved it to the side to hoover out the hole and then I just had a little lapse of concentration and I, and I just went, oh no. It's just because I moved it to hoover it out for the first go. Basically, when you do these holes, you need to plunge it, do an initial hole, take it out, hoover it, and do a second plunge. But yeah, I'm even gonna have to make a noticeable thing. I'm gonna have to put a plaque in there saying Ryan made this bench or something, a route or something in there. Or I'm gonna have to just cut a little patch into there. Any ideas? Give us a shout what you think I should do with this boo-boo. Really pissed off with that. But even the best of us make mistakes. 
I'm joking. All right, so now I'm going to get my headphones on. Where are they, Sean? Over there. It's going to be a little bit dusty. Do you want to get your mask on, Sean? Yeah. Okay. I've got to look after the film crew. <sighs> right, so now I've got my headphones and my mask. Um, I'm going to take the plunge. So initially, I'm just going to go wobble my router in and plunge it at the same time to do one initial cut in every time, in every hole, every X. I'm going to take my router out, give it a quick hoover, and then go for a second plunge, all right? So let's go for it. Okay, so let's give that a quick cover. The best way, that way you just, you, you know it's accurate. If you dust it out, it's, you know, you're still left with rubble in there, or well, not rubble, a bit of crap in there where you just, the bush isn't gonna ride up against the hole probably. Okay, so now I've done that, have a little look. What I've, I've just plunged all the way through, give myself a rough hole all the way through. And now um, I'm just going to go for the second pass. Again, it's the same thing. Okay. Rock it. Down. Well, I found before that I might even go for a third because as you do that, you still get a little build up of dust. So for the sake of this video and for the sake of my bench, only doing it once, I'm gonna do the same process once more, hoover it out and then do it one last time. So I found that I did have one or two tight ones. So I'm gonna go for that. So you notice as I plunged it, I plunged it all the way down, I locked it into position and I didn't try and take off all that meat in one go. I just skimmed it and went round and round and round until I didn't hear any cutting noise anymore. Okay. Get my earphones as well. Okay, so in theory, that should be enough. But rule of thumb is do everything to the best of your ability, isn't it? Hoover it a while once more. See, I can show you a dog as well. I'll show you one in. So let's see what the resistance is like. It's quite tight. See, that's not going in. You see what I mean about it not being spot on just yet. It's probably because there's a bit of crap lying around the inside of that hole. Yeah, so just goes to show that that extra bit of crap needs to be taken out. So all right, last time, and you'll find that all going Right, so you heard a tiny bit of that um, meat being taken out again from the last pass. Let's see. So this is a standard um, dog. There we go. Perfect. Just enough resistance. Remember, we're lacquering these. So we wanna, we don't want them so tight because they're only gonna get smaller. That goes in. 
that goes in, that goes in. So basically that is how you use this jig and what you're gonna do next, very simply, the holes that you just routed. Again, you literally just take these out so you can eye up your hole. That's the hole we've just done. We're gonna put that in. And put that one in too. There we go, test it to make sure there's no play, which there's not, and you keep on going. Remember, if you're just doing a smaller bench, you may be doing every single hole. I'm doing every second hole, so I need to just do this last row, which I've X'd. So my X is, I'm just gonna go by this X every time. We have another look. There we go, there's all the holes. And let me get me a few more dogs. That one needs, doing that. so I've got one. We've got two, where's the third dog? That one's, I need to redo that one because there we go. That one was a tight one out of everything. But, and I'm gonna get you a straight edge and test it for you. So here we've got a T-track, which we're possibly gonna be putting in. Let's see what it's like up against all three. Have a look at that, spot on. Yeah. And obviously you can do the same way. One, two, three. Spot on. I'm really happy with that. So any more tips that I can give you? Basically, just double check before you route it every time. Get your marking out right. Set your bench out. If you've got a bespoke size, set it out first. Make sure that that set of holes or whatever has got nothing underneath it. So you go, oh, I'm starting here. Oh no, by the time I get there, I've got a bit of wood under there or I've got a block or I can't route through that section. You know, so plan it. That's my first tip. Secondly, try a hole and try your shims around your bush, making sure that you've got the right size. And even after a few uses, um, you have still got the same size hole because I've heard a few of you gave me messages to definitely do this because, um, one guy did it and he didn't realize about the tape and he'd done them all and there was so much slop. But, you know, if you're doing an MDF top, which is a one-off, it doesn't really matter. I'm doing something that's costing me 400 pound worth of birch and I've put 150 hours into this top already, matched it. You know, there's so much work gone into this, I can't make a mistake. So apart from that, um, I'd like to say thank you to CNC Design for this template. Literally half the price of some, something you get off trend. Um, or something like that. You know, I've got a few dogs, a couple of sets of dogs, two tall dogs and four small dogs, plus this, plus shipping for 70 or 80 pounds, which is nothing considering I can use it over and over and over and over again. It's never gonna wear out. So I think that's it guys. Um, they're all my tips. If you've got any other questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer them. But other than that, other than that, have a good rest of the day. Take it easy. Ciao for now.